When we found out we were pregnant, we were ec ecstatic. We were having twins. But um, halfway through the pregnancy, the doctors told me that I only had a 50% chance for the girls to survive. And that was devastating news. Um, but what was more devastating was after the girls were born, um, probably when they were about four days old, the doctors told us they wouldn't make it through the night. And we couldn't imagine doing life without them. And um, we found out the next day that God had another plan for them. We had plans to return to the Dominican after the girls were born. But after we found out they were deaf, um, we got some advice to stay stateside. We heard about Heiser Hearing and Language Academy, which was then Louisville Deaf Oral School. And we made the very difficult decision to uproot our family and move back to Louisville. And that single-handedly has been the best decision that we've ever made. Emily was our first um, person that we met at Heiser, and she was hands down um, just an incredible advocate for our girls, for our family. She had this amazing combination of compassion and care, but also challenge, where she would challenge us um, towards the goals that we had for our kids, um, and she would set the bar high for them, knowing um, what their potential was and doing everything in her power to help them achieve that. Christy Linda Meyer started working with the girls when they were one year old. Uh, just her compassion and dedication and commitment to our kids. Uh, it was just so evident in how she cared for them and then just her, um, her willingness to pour into us uh, to help us with our advocacy for our kids and to work with our kids. It was just um, a real gift started a play group when they were two with uh, Paula and Mary Beth and they were just fantastic working with our girls in the very early stages of this walk that we've been on and uh, Paula also she uh, serves on a uh, national advocacy group for deaf and hard of hearing children the parents of deaf and hard of hearing children called hands and voices we, we sit on the board together and uh, she's like an advocacy superhero for for our kids, for any kid with, with hearing issues. And she's such a tremendous asset and has been such a huge blessing to our family as well. I learned this all because she's fun. She's fun. At three, the girls started full day school at Heiser. And I remember thinking, they are so young to go to school all day long but they had Fran. Um, they started with Sydney and then they had Fran and they were both just such incredible caregivers for the girls. And it was hard for me to trust other people with their care at that time, but I completely trusted them. And um, the most special thing about Fran is that she loved Ran and Sophie the way that I love them. And she cared for them and she would work. I swear she had a bed at the school and stayed the night overnight because she would work endless hours on doing special things for them, on making visual um, pieces for them so that they could learn um, how to speak and they could learn how to communicate um, and they could learn how to, to socialize with, with their peers. I like Miss Fran because she looks pretty. Sophie and Raina had Pam as a preschool teacher. In fact, they would come home on the weekends and cry because they miss Pam. And they still miss Pam, and they love Pam. The, just the years of experience that she has brought to the table uh, on behalf of our kids has been great. Uh, also, just being the mother of a daughter herself, I've, I've appreciated that she would always fix my, my hair fixing jobs at school after I delivered them. Uh, she always knew when I was the one that got the girls ready for school. <laughs> so, we love Pam for that, too. <laughs> I like Pam because she's the best. At five, the girls started kindergarten at Heiser. And uh, Raina had Pam, and Sophie had Gail. And they just helped them um, transition into mainstream. It was something that we dreaded for years, but it was just seamless. Gail would work countless hours in helping the girls transition from a classroom of six kids to a classroom of 26. And um, just the way that, that she loved them and challenged them 
um, and worked with them on these intricate things um, and worked extra hours to make sure that they were 100% ready to go. Um, and then she, she pushed them out of the nest and, and we've been able to watch them spread their wings and fly. Um, and Gail is just an, an incredibly gifted teacher to be able to help children and parents transition uh, from one phase to the next. My favorite thing in Miss Gail's class is writing my journal. Along with going to Heiser half days for kindergarten, the girls were going to St. Matthew's Elementary School as well, and it was a fantastic transition. Um, their teacher, Mrs. Merker, there has been wonderful. She um, has has just been such a great advocate for the girls and such a great encouragement for them. And um, throughout their kindergarten year at St. Matthew's, the girls were actually in their first play and had their first speaking parts. trips for uh, our ministry with leaders to go and show them what we do in the Dominican Republic and Haiti and just a year or so ago I had a woman with me from Houston Texas and we uh, got to know each other and turns out that she sits on the board for the equivalent of Heiser in Houston and when she found out about the girls and where they were going to school at Heiser uh, she said Jeff you know for what it is that is the finest school in the nation you know, I didn't know that about Heiser, but I'm not surprised to find out, and I'm so grateful for that. You know, just one more hugely encouraging word and support that has come alongside of our family as we walked in this journey. There's a um, there's a theologian that that I love, Stanley Hauerwas. He teaches at Duke, and uh, in, a, in a book that was compiled about the theology of disability, uh, he writes. Necessities force us off the paths of least resistance and make us more likely to create communities of care. And uh, everyone at Heiser that has been at Heiser has been involved at Heiser and has been connected with our girls through this uh, through this journey of deafness and cochlear implants. You have been such a community of care that we would have never been a part of otherwise. And uh, no that as far as the Rogers are concerned, you just have our deep, deep hearted gratitude and thanks. So thank you. I remember the first day that I walked into Heiser and um, I remember just walking in and the place was so bright and so full of life and so full of joy and um, the people that worked there were so happy. They, they loved working together. It was like entering into a family. And um, the, that place for us, as I was walking down the halls, I knew that it was a place full of hope. Um, the teachers there, the administration, the staff, the audiologist, everyone together works collaboratively um, into this, this incredible group, all with the same mission, to help these children reach their full potential um, and to help their families understand how to help them in that way. And that's what Heiser does for Mona, who is the most incredible advocate um, for these kids and loves them like they're um, her own. Um, to, to all the teachers, to all the, the teacher's aides, to Jill and Greta, um, just everyone there. To Kristen, who um, has done speech therapy with the girls. Everyone together has worked collaboratively um, to bring our girls to where they are. Uh, the doctors told me five years ago that uh, the girls may never be able to walk, and they told them told me that they'd never be able to speak. And you guys have walked um, alongside of us and have made those doctors liars because you single-handedly um, have turned our little girls into butterflies, and now they are truly flying and we are forever grateful to you. Thank you. Thank you, Heiser. We will miss you. We, we love, love you. you.